place and we rebuke the enemy. And we are ready to praise and worship our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight. Amen.
We could never understand the love that God has for us, church.
understand that we're loved by Jesus. To understand that all our faults, all the things, my Lord, that I've done, still get aggravated and do things. You know, it's, God still loves me. God still loves us, church. God still loves us. So good to see Ryan and Serena. Praise God. Ryan, who Serena was there? <laughs> Ryan, you either, dear Lord. <laughs> Take shirt, <sure>, bud. <laughs> you good, good God. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. To my head.
my heart is breaking, y'all, because the heart of this world isn't good. The heart of this world isn't good. I think we can see that with George this week. And, and uh, you know, uh, racism is sin. I'll just say that loud and clear today. Racism is sin. Uh, racism is hatred. Christians should not have hatred in their heart. Uh, we should not have hatred toward one another. It shouldn't matter what color we are. It shouldn't matter if we're male or female. You know, and, and uh, we all struggle with some of those things, different things. Uh, you don't think it exists in this world, but it sure does. And we've got a really, really bad look at it this last few weeks. And God forgive us, Brother Delbert, if we don't take some time and ask for forgiveness for our country and for ourselves for not just racism but idolatry. God cannot stand idolatry. He will have no other gods before him. It says so in the word of God. If you look every time that Israel went up and they went down, and they went up and they went down. The times they were up is because they were serving the Lord. That's right. And they were consecrating themselves to the Lord. And they were seeking God with their it says with their whole hearts and with their whole mind. And they were asking God to forgive them. And they were tearing down the idols and they were tearing down their uh, father's shrines. And I was just reading about Josiah who I love to said that he made his the idols into dust. And I was like, thank God for a man of God who can make idols into dust. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I wish that I could go make some idols into dust. We have them in our cities. We have them in our towns. You know, and I was just sitting there thinking, you know, some of the reason I think that this happened is because, God forbid, we, church, we shut churches down and deem them unessential and we make liquor stores essential. Right. You know, God help us. God help us, folks. Uh, God help us. And, uh, you know, and I know we got to be careful. And I know we've got to be careful. And I know, you know, you should be washing your hands all the time. Let me tell you now. Wash your hands. Even if COVID's over, wash your hands, please. Uh, you know, please continue to do that. But we need, there needs to be a washing of our heart. You know, and there needs to be a washing of our soul and of our minds and of our bodies. Not, not just the outside. Lord knows we need a bath. You know, we don't want to stink on the outside. But even more so, I don't want to stink on the inside. And uh, so we've got to have God look at us. And uh, one of the questions that she asked in the war room is, if you had to tell me what your prayer life was tonight, would you rate yourself between a one, the poorest prayer that you've ever prayed, and you have the, the weakest prayer life you've ever had in your whole entire life, to ten, the most awesome? Where would you be? Don't answer. Don't answer. I'm not even sure where I fall, okay? That's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm honest. You know, and uh, I, I'm fixing it. God's fixing it. Uh, but... Uh, you know, we've got to first look at our own heart. And we've got to first say, Rachel needs work in this area. And you've got to look at yourself. And you've got to do a self-evaluation through the eyes of a holy God, y'all. Not through Rachel Odom. Not through Pastor Shellnut. Not through anyone else in this world. But you've got to do an evaluation with the word of God in your heart. And you got to let God tell you what you need to work on. And then, this is the one area I've been talking to Jeff about for weeks. Uh, is, uh, I told him, there's got to be some submitting. There's got to be some confession. There's got to be, I, I told him, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell him later that I told y'all, but... I told him a few weeks ago that he needs to quit pulling people out of their seat to the altar. The man has a great heart. I love my husband's heart. Nobody's heart is bigger than Jeff Odom's with the people I love him to death. But the Lord was showing me that that person who's sitting in the seat that needs something has got to make the conscious choice 
whether or not they really want God's help or whether or not they don't. It's true. And that's the point that we're at. We've got to make a conscious decision whether or not we are going to live for God, whether or not we're going to do the things that God wants us to do, or are we not? That brings me to our next scripture. Amen. Revelations chapter 4. No, Revelation chapter 3, excuse me. And I know we've heard the scripture, and we've heard the scripture, and we've heard the scripture. And I'm not going to apologize for my preaching tonight. I'm just not going to do it. God, this is you. Amen. Look, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, and it says, And to the angel, pastor of the church, or of the church of Lacedia, write these things, say that, Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, and I would have you to either be cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, she makes a great illustration, and I had really intended to bring my coffee cup here tonight. Because I don't know about y'all, I do drink my coffee hot. Sometimes it is lukewarm, and sometimes I drink it cold. As long as it gets in me and I feel like I woke up, I feel like I'm okay. But, really, if I had the preference, I would prefer that my coffee be hot, especially in the winter time, uh, because there's nothing that beats a good cup of hot coffee in the winter. Amen, and thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you for coffee. Uh, but, you know, the Bible it said, it told us that we cannot neither be lukewarm, that we need to be cold, or we need to be hot. I'm not trying to condemn nobody tonight, y'all. I'm not trying to condemn nobody because uh, John 3, 17 says that Jesus came not to condemn this world, but came to save it. You know, he came to save it. And Jesus loves you. I want you to know that tonight. I want you to know that Jesus loved you so much. I just read some, some things in Second Chronicles today about how that they used to fillet the, uh, some of the... Um, the sacrifices that they would give and they would sprinkle the, the uh, blood of the lamb around uh, things and uh, that hit my heart today because I was like my God, they fillet a lamb, they fillet like they split open the skin okay, and you're like, okay Rachel what's the big deal? Well the big deal is is that Jesus Christ was filleted Jesus Christ was filleted with a cat of nine tails and it ripped his skin off of his back just for you and me. That's for sure. And thank God for the yeah, grace yeah, of God. I, I was reading about Jesus. grace this week. I'm so thankful for grace. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace of God. I thank God, you know, without the grace of God, Lord God, we would never have a chance. And that, that's one of the things, you know, that we, to get there, though, to get, you got to repent and you got to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. We got to forgive God. We got to go back to the altar. We got to make our altar. We got to make an altar in our family. We got to pray with our husband. We got to pray with our wives. We got to pray for everything, y'all. Everything. Before it says pray without ceasing. He should be your best friend. You should be talking to him 24 7, every day of the week, all day long. God, you know, he, he's your best friend. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Repent, Lord. Uh, this one, this one um, is one of my scriptures that I used to use a long time ago. And it helps us to clean our heart and it helps to make right attitudes within our heart. It's Psalms chapter 51, verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And the verse after that, says, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Amen. I do not want the precious Holy Spirit away from me. Amen. Oh, if you've ever lived without the Holy Spirit, you do not want to. Right. And, you know, I, I just tell you tonight that do not be without the Holy Spirit, God. He's awesome. I love Amen. him. Amen. There's none beside him. There's none there's nothing that can take the place of the precious Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I want to go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. It says, 
that for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I love verse 5 too, so I'm going to read it too, because we need to hear this. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You might not can help what goes in your mind sometimes. Sometimes it just pops in there. But you don't have to let it nest. Right. You know, you don't have to let that bird build a nest in your hair. You know, just because it pops in your head doesn't mean you have to let it stay. You, if you think about something bad, then you just say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, That's Satan. It. You get out of here right now. And then I've had it happen in my sleep. You know, and I used to tell myself, oh, Delbert, I can't help what I dream and sleep. I can't help. Yes, you can. Amen. Yes, you can. You wake yourself out of your slumber. You look at yourself and you look all around you and you say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And you get out of my house and you get out of my room and you get out of my pillow. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Rebuke you. So we we don't we don't fight in the flesh. Our our Satan is not fleshly. He is spiritual, and we must do warfare in the spirit of God. Amen. John chapter fifteen verse seven. It says, "If you abide in me, and my words abide in you." Then you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Amen. Good scripture. Good scripture. If I'm in Jesus and Jesus is in me, then I can ask what I want, and in Jesus' name it will be done. Amen. And, uh, you know, after we created us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. And I wrote this down because this is what the heart of the message really is, is that God wants us to be clean, and he wants us to be close. He wants us to be clean, and he wants us to be close. He wants a relationship with you. I always like to say this. He wants a relationship with you so bad that he died for it. He died for it. He died for it. He died so that you can have access to the Heavenly Father, so that we can boldly go and make our petitions known. Amen? Oh, thank you, Jesus. But we must surrender. We have to have the relationship. And it's God's way. It's not my way. It's God's way. I want to go to Mark chapter 11. Verse 24 and 25. I don't know. I got a lot of verses in Poor Karen. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. 11, 24, and 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, what, th what, so what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And what you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. That your, he that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. I have to pause. We have to forgive. Amen. We have to forgive. I like the part on War Room. I've been married 27 years to the same man. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing and the torture. <laughs> yeah, I love him. He's awesome. I uh, wouldn't want to do life without him. Uh, but uh, in the war room, she's she's talking about how bad her husband is, how terrible he is, all these bad things that her husband has done to her, and done uh, against him. And uh, you know, the lady, uh, she's saying, "Well, uh, do you think God still loves him?" And of course, the answer is yes. Do you think God still loves your worst enemy? Yes. Yes, he does. Right. Do you think that God would forgive them? Yes. Yes, he will. Does he expect you to forgive them? Yes. Yes, he does. He does. 
And I always look, I try to look at it like this now. I'm not perfect, y'all. I've had some serious issues with this. I've had to ask God to help me to forgive some people, you know what I'm saying? Because people ain't all great all the time. So I've had to literally go to the altar and say, God, I want to forgive these people. But you know in my heart that I really am having a hard time forgiving. So I need your help to forgive these people. You know, and God has helped me and blessed me and helped me to forgive. You know, uh, but uh, we've got to forgive them. Or it says that you cannot enter heaven, y'all. It's true. It's the truth. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to forgive. I want to forgive you. Amen. Amen? And there's something beautiful about forgiveness. You know that if you've been through forgiveness with somebody, you have a better relationship with that person. Right. You really do. You really do. Uh, I can tell you, you know, that, like I said, Jeff and I have been together for 27 years. He has made me so mad. Oh, made me so mad. Oh, so mad. But you know what? I find myself going, looking at it going now. you got to forgive. you got to forgive him. Jane, you got to forgive him. Stinking. <laughs> no, no. you got to forgive him. you got to forgive him. you got to live with him. You've got to live with them. You said, I do. You didn't say, I don't. You didn't say, I don't. You said, for better or for worse. I don't even like those words anymore. <laughs> for better or for worse, boy, you're 19 and just, uh, yeah, young, and you don't think correctly. Uh, but <laughs> I was 19 and young and didn't think correctly. I'm just saying. There's some very responsible 19-year-olds out there, I know. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, you know, but God helps us to forgive. You know, I've had to go to God. Let me tell you where to go. Go to God. Go to God and tell him, God, I don't like this and this and this. And you know what? Jeffrey did this and this and this and this. And you tell God. Him. Tell God. And say with the men to the women. Go tell God what your woman did to you. Go tell on each other like a little child with a father. Go to your father, tell on each other, and he makes it all mad. <laughs> he does. He does. Mm -hmm. And the best part is, is when you start telling on yourself. You know, I remember a time in our marriage where, you know, I was praying for God to change Jeff. God changed Jeff. God changed Jeff. And he says he was praying the same for me. Re Jeff uh, was praying. Rachel, uh, God changed Rachel. And it wasn't until we started praying God Help me to change me. Right. That he really, really did some change in our lives. You know, the only person that you can have change through the power of the Lord is, G is yourself through right. Jesus Christ. And then through anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, he helps you to speak to others. Amen. Right. Amen. We need to pick the splinter out or beam out of our own eye and, the, you know, let our brother and pray for our brother. First John. Can you bring up first John chapter three, eighteen? This is the one I'm marking my Bible, y'all. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So, you know. Uh, our actions should be speaking louder than our words. Your actions should be speaking louder than your words. Do you know that the mark of a disciple of Jesus Christ is supposed to be loving one another? All right. That is how people are supposed to know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. But God help us, I see a lot of what Mike Warren, Warnke used to say, is I see Christians attacking other Christians like sharks with blood in the water. God help us to lift each other up and to pray for one another instead of speaking badly against each other. Amen and thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. God help us. <clears throat> If you ask, you seek, you knock, you keep on asking, uh, because God hears you. Luke chapter 11, verse 9, 13. Joy is made full, pay, pray through Christ.
Christ, God is glorified through Christ. God is, will answer our prayers. He will. He will answer your prayers if you just pray and you believe. I like this part. How much we pray reveals how much we depend on God. How much we pray reveals how much we depend on God. This one, I think we, we need to do every time we get a chance. Confess your great need for God. Tell him. Get down on your face. Get down on your knees. Get down on a chair. And tell God, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need God. I need Him. I don't just want everything that He gives me. I don't just want the promises of God. I want a relationship with God. I want to hear from my Heavenly Father. I want to hear from the Spirit of God. It is time, church, that we become hungry and thirsty for the things of God again. Hungry and thirsty for the things of God. I believe God's fixing to do something so great, so great in our time. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow my mind. Oh, but we got to get there first. We gotta get there first. We gotta just humble yourself before God. It is not your right to come before God. <laughs> oh, but because of God and because of Jesus Christ, He, oh, it's not by our works or that any man should boast. I love that. But it's because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. who shed His blood and died. And forgave me of my sin. And if we can remember that God forgave us of our sins, then that should help us a lot extend that grace card. Sure, man. You know, I, I like that movie, The Grace Card. I've been watching all them Christian movies here lately. Uh, that, uh, that one I haven't seen uh, yet again, but I will. Uh, this is one that we are lacking right now <laughs> because our Christian community has been kind of broken up. But I want to tell you what church does for you. My daddy always used to say, and I guess his dad used to say, that church is like a fuel station. You wouldn't run your car without gas. You've got to go to the fuel station. Church is like the fuel station. Right. You know, you've got to come, and you've got to fuel up on Jesus. Now, there is a reason. I want to bring this up. There's a reason I didn't homeschool my children. I wanted my children to be... A little smarter than I am. A little more educated than I am. I want, you know, my math, dear Lord, I need help still to this day. Uh, you know, and uh, so I decided to send them to school where people have a better degree than I do. And they have different thinking than I do. Praise the Lord. And uh, they have more diversity at school. So I look at it this way. If I would not homeschool my child because of my lack of education and everything that school offers my children, then why would I not go to church? Do you think that you know everything there is about God to teach your children for yourself? I hear so many times, oh, we don't need church because we are church. You need church. That's right. Yeah. You need church. And one reason we need church is so that we can be accountable one to another. We can be accountable one to another. We can be accountable one to another. That's hard. It's hard. It's got to lose weight, try to go on a diet. It's hard to be accountable. But you know what? Accountability keeps you on the right path. Accountability keeps you on the right path. Also, yes, we are the church. I hear that all the time. Oh, Rachel, we don't need church because we are the church. Yes, you are. 
And I'm not saying you shouldn't be the church outside of the church because the church is not the building. The church is the body. But let me mention this to you. If I'm the toe and you're the eyeballs, then how am I supposed to read my word being the toe if my eyeballs are missing? We all help each other in a different form and fashion. We're all not perfect. We're all forgiven. I love you. I need you. You need me. God help you. Jesus. <laughs> and the Bible does say to forsake not the sibling of yourself together. Yes. So there's that also. And I, you know what's funny? One time I was washing my dishes. And uh, I had the, the, the dishwasher open. And I was fixing to put a pan into the dishwasher. And I had just been going, you know what? I bet if I'm the body of Christ, I'm the stinking little toe. Here I am feeling sorry for myself, you know. I am the stinking little toe. How important is the stinking little toe? You know, I was playing my little violin to myself. And I dropped that pen, guess where? On my little toe. Did you know that my whole body hurt because my little toe hurt? And I had a bump about this big on my little toe. And I was hollering, and I was crying, and I couldn't wait to get off my little toe because it hurt, Jane. And I want to tell you, though, that that's exactly the way the body of Christ should be for each other. If you are heart, I should hobble around, and I should holler, and I should pray to God and ask God to touch you and to heal you and to forgive you. And God, touch my brother and be with my brother and be with my sister. And God, Jesus, if we're supposed to be excited with one another, well then, oh man, you know, uh, uh, I just got a thousand dollars. I just got a thousand dollars. And I'm so excited. God bless me, you know. And everybody should be excited for each other. But in the same respect, you know, no, here we are going, well, I don't understand why God didn't do that for me. You know, thankful for you. <laughs> be thankful for what God does to us. Amen. Ask God to identify the things that you put before him. Ask him. Ask him. Say, God, I ask you, what is it that I am putting before you? What do you do first thing in the morning? Do you check your phone? Do you get on Facebook? People tell you that they ain't got no time to read the word of God. And they tell you that you ain't got no time to spend in prayer, yet you can be on Candy Crush, you can be saving Lily's Garden, you can be playing uh, 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 whatever else everybody else plays. Uh, but, you know, you can do all these games, but you, can't, you don't got no time to read the Word. Really? Really? It's time we check ourselves, y'all. It's time we take a good look in the mirror and say, God, forgive me for my shortcomings. Brother, no, he knows. He knows. He knows. That's why he put it in the communion. That's why he put it in the Lord's Supper. It's so that we wouldn't take that cup unworthily. It's not to keep us from taking the cup. It's for us to have a repentance time. It's for us to say, God, forgive me if there's any uncleanness in me. God, you forgive me. And he is just and faithful to forgive us. He is just and faithful to forgive us. What do you need to get out of your life so that you can have a better relationship with God Almighty? What is keeping you? One of the things I wrote down for myself is, and I like to think about this from time to time. This isn't my first time talking about this, but what is your spiritual goal? We should have a physical goal, a financial goal, or we should have a spiritual goal. What is your spiritual goal? And what are you doing today to get there? What are you doing today to get there? God help us. <laughs> I love John chapter 15, verse 13, because I really I want to leave this on a, on a positive note. And I, I'm not trying to be negative here tonight, y'all really not. But God 
this is a great scripture because, you know, our country isn't free without those who fought, fled, and died for it. And for those that are fighting for it today. And we should be praying for them. Uh, and uh, But John 15, 13, it says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. My Jesus died. My Jesus took his life and put it on the cross. I stood on Jeff the other day and I said, Jeff, he could have called 10,000 angels. He could have called so many angels down and said, God, get me off here. I can't stand this. I can't do it. But he didn't. And Jeff always reminded me, you know what held Jesus on the cross? It wasn't nails. It was love. It was love. His love. His love for you and me held my Jesus, held your Jesus to the cross of Calvary so that we could boldly go, so that we could confess our sins and say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Take anything that is not right, Lord, and make it right, God. God created me that clean heart. I renew, Lord God, that right spirit within me. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Take Rachel, Kathleen, Odom, completely off the throne. I submit to you and give you all control. In Jesus' name I pray. That's not just a, a sinner's prayer, y'all. That should be our prayer. God created me a clean heart. Anything that would keep me out of heaven, Lord. I'd ask myself that other day, you know, like I was walking and I think I was coming here actually, and I was thinking to get on up here and you know, thoughts come through your mind sometimes and I was just thinking, you know, if I got shot today, would I be right with the Lord? And I ain't speaking nothing over me. But I sat there and I was like, God, I think I would be, but just in case, forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, because I want to make it to heaven, y'all. I want to make it to heaven. Amen, me too. You know, and no matter how many times, you know, I want to thank my dad, and I know I'm quoting my dad a lot tonight, it's all right. Uh, but uh, one of my dad's things that he says is, uh, it doesn't matter how many times you fall down. It's a good back up. That matters. Get back up. God wants to help us finish the race. He wants us to finish the race, y'all. And he wants us to take as many as we can with us. That's why I think the, the gospel should not be contained to a building. I, I am more fervent right now about getting the gospel out on the street. Get it out to the, to the people that need it. Jesus sat with sinners. He sat with the tax collectors. He went to Samaria. It said because he needed to. He went to the heathens. And then the heathens followed him, thank God. And they became Christians, amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's pray together tonight, y'all. Let's pray together. Jesus, Lord God, we love you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. God, we thank you, that, Lord God, that you can. And you can't show us, Lord God, what we have not done right. Lord Father God, you said who you love if you chastise us, Lord. You only chastise us, us, Lord, and get on to us because, Lord God, you want us to make it to heaven. Lord God, we, we humble before you, Lord God, and we submit ourselves to you, God. God, we just ask you, Lord God, to help us to clean out the things that are not right. God, we ask you, I ask you, Lord God, to... Uh, help people to get rid of the things, Lord God, that they might not need in their life, Lord God. Jesus, I just ask you to show them wherever they are, Lord God. Go. Go, Lord God. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, go in Jesus' name. 
You have control in the name of Jesus, we pray. Your church, I was going to say that tonight, the Lord's reminded me, it starts with the body of Christ. It starts with the body of Christ. Judgment must start at the body of Christ. We must first look at ourselves, Lord God, and judge ourselves, Lord God. Jesus, Lord God, we submit to you. We ask you for forgiveness, Lord. Forgive us of our shortcomings, of our faults, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.